Part of the difficulty with air pollution when you're talking about the direct impact of air pollution is you don't tend to have air pollution written on the death certificate. You know, air pollution affects many other types of diseases and we're starting to get a much better understanding of that. But without that data and without that extra analysis to take that extra step to understand the causes and the effects of air pollution, we're still slightly in the dark about how big a problem this is. The good thing at the moment is we're starting to get some of that analysis out and it shows that this is a massive problem. And of course, the first step to finding solutions is acknowledging that you've got a large problem. I think the fact that London consistently breaks its air pollution records in a really short number of days every year shows that you know, the city and politicians and the people in charge clearly do not take air pollution seriously enough. Air pollution is an issue that affects London dearly, but it also goes way beyond that. There are an awful lot of cities outside of London that also experience these problems. And I think sometimes there's a Westminster-centric view on this. What Dsmog UK really wants to do is understand how this does affect communities outside of that London centre. The other thing about air pollution, of course, is it's absolutely affects everyone. The air we, we breathe moves. It moves all over the place. That means that you're not just going to breathe it in London if it comes from London. You're not going to just breathe it in Scunthorpe if it comes from Scunthorpe. So it's important that there is a nationwide response to this and there's a nationwide understanding of what's going on. Air pollution as is an issue as well is obviously tied to industrial histories in the UK. It's not just London that it experiences it. It's old industrial centres like Scunthorpe, for example, that had a large manufacturing base. The government generally neglects these areas anyway. Now, air pollution is a real opportunity to highlight the fact that the central government in Westminster does need to turn its view outwards towards the rest of the country. You do wonder somewhat that if the air pollution was as bad in the Tory Shah as it is in some of these historic industrial areas, if action might have been slightly different. DSmog UK did an investigation earlier this year looking at local authorities' air pollution strategies. Uh, we looked at 77 local authorities across the Midlands, predominantly in constituencies that voted for Brexit. And what we found was that local authorities, largely because they're under such severe pressure with budget cuts, are really struggling to report on air pollution problems. Now, obviously, if you don't report on air pollution problems, you can't then work out solutions to those problems. So that's a major, major problem. We found that just under half of those had gaps in their reporting. So something like 34 local authorities hadn't managed to produce the reports that the government requires them to produce. We've done a little bit of extra digging on this to try and work out why this is, and we discovered that's because a lot of those local authorities have had to either squeeze their teams, cut staff, merge those staff into uh, other teams within their departments, and that means the expertise and the time simply isn't available for them to be able to address this issue. And again, it goes back to showing the government isn't taking this problem seriously enough. The government's national plan continues to put the onus on local authorities to deal with this problem, but they can't. So one thing that DSmog UK does a lot of is looks at corporate lobbying around environmental and climate issues in the UK. And it seems fairly obvious, but corporations have an awful lot of power. One thing in particular that they have, which you know, normal citizens don't have, is access to government. So we spend an awful lot of time going through disclosure logs, trying to understand who has met with who, when they've met, and what they've said in those meetings. This is a standing item in government. This is normal practice for ministers. And one thing that we want to do is try and highlight how unfair that is. So if they're given access to you know, car companies, you know, around issues like air pollution, they're meeting with environmental ministers, they're meeting with trade and business ministers, then those ministers should also be listening to the general public who have a legitimate concern around issues like air pollution, which affect a huge number of people in the UK. Fundamentally, this uh, recent issues around the dirty diesel scandal, this is a corporate issue rather than an individual's issue. And it's important that the government and other politicians hold the right people to account on this. You know, it's not individuals' fault if they thought they were doing something that was good for the environment, but it is the fault of corporations if they were willingly and knowingly selling vehicles that they knew were breaking these regulations. I think Brexit has a really significant impact on issues like air pollution because the EU currently has an awful lot of environmental regulations. And one thing that DSmog UK is looking really closely at is where the potential for corporate lobbying comes in as we start to unpick those regulations and put them into our own legislation. Is there a gap there? Are there going to be corporate lobbyists trying to get their own agenda onto the statute book in the UK? History would suggest that whenever there's an opportunity for deregulation, lobbying will occur. And people have to be watching this, and that's why organisations like DSmog UK invest a lot of resources in trying to get behind the scenes on those kind of negotiations to really try and understand what's going on.
I think Sadiq Khan, when he came into office, demonstrated that he at least understood conceptually that air pollution was a major problem. I think that's a positive thing. The first step is always acknowledging you've got an issue. He's not managed to make action quick enough. You know, London broke its air pollution levels within the first five days this year. That shows that this city has a major, major problem. He's made some good noises around transport. He's made some good noises around addressing this issue. But he's yet to really deliver any firm policies that suggest that there's going to be a major difference next year or during his term in office. People need to push for action, but they need to push for fast action. Mm -hmm.